In section 7.4 we deal with three main topics, resonance, formal charges and octet rule exceptions. So your book does deal with octet rule exceptions in section 7.3, but I put it right in this part because it really links in very nicely with the two concepts of resonance and formal charges. So allotropes are different molecular forms of an element. So examples could be things like the um, diamond form of carbon versus graphite. They're both made up 100% of carbon atoms, but they're different molecular forms of the element. Um, and there are other examples for different elements. Ozone is an allotrope of oxygen. And uh, the most common allotrope of oxygen is regular diatomic oxygen. But ozone is found um, in the upper atmosphere, um, where it's sort of formed as a result of the action of very um, strong UV radiation up there. And it's also formed in lightning storms and other high energy processes, some things like arc welding, and where you have like electrical sparks with a lot of energy. So what happens is a diatomic oxygen gets decomposed into um, atomic oxygen and then that atomic oxygen is highly reactive um, it has two unpaired electrons and it reacts with the molecular oxygen to form a molecule of ozone so like I said ozone is um, often formed in like high energy environments so it can be formed inside your automobile due to the combustion of fuels and at power stations and a problem with ozone is it really irritates your lungs and it's also a source of um, acidic conditions that can be damaging to plant life. In the upper atmosphere you've probably heard of the ozone layer and ozone plays an important role in shielding us from UV radiation from the sun. In particular it blocks a type of UV radiation called UVB and um, that can kind of lead to skin cancers and other things. So there's a small band of ozone right at the top of our atmosphere and um, until the mid 90s we were burning a big old hole in this ozone layer right above the south pole and chemists figured out what was going on and they actually found out how to stop that hole from forming and um, in a sense chemists saved the world and uh, yeah we'll talk about that a lot in chemistry 163 so we're going to draw the Lewis structure for ozone. Oxygen is in group 6A. So we have 3 times 6, because we've got 3 oxygen atoms here, 18 valence electrons to work with. So our choice of central atom is oxygen, oxygen, or oxygen. So it's pretty clearly going to be oxygen. So the basic kind of point where we begin is with 3 oxygen atoms connected in a line. So there's our central atom and then we've got our two outer oxygen atoms. And so our next step is to complete the octets on our outer atoms. And we do that by placing three lone pairs on each of them. And then we have two electrons left over at that point and they're going to go on our central atom. So we put those two electrons on our central atom. Now we check the octet of our central atom and um, what we find is that it only has six electrons around it, two, four, six. So we need to complete the octet by bringing in one lone pair. Now, do you bring the lone pair in from the left or do you bring the lone pair in from the right or does it not make any difference? But whatever you do, you're gonna end up with a structure like this. Each of the outer oxygen atoms, they have lone pairs on them one of these outer oxygen atoms is attached via a single bond. It has six um, lone electrons on it. The other outer oxygen atom is connected to the central atom via a double bond and it has two lone pairs on it. The central atom has just a single lone pair. So it looks like in ozone we have one single bond and one double bond, but you know, we have two equally as good Lewis structures. One just happens to have the double bond on the left, and the other one happens to have the double bond on the right. But you know, if we just flip this molecule, we'd end up with the other one. So it looks like these two are what we call equivalent Lewis structures. There's no real difference between them. They're all equally as good as each other. 
So in that final step of drawing the Lewis structure for ozone, there were two choices. We could bring the lone pair in from the right, or we could bring the lone pair in from the left. And as we were talking, one is not any better than the other. It'll, they both use up the um, electrons that are available, and they both result in every atom having an octet. So the answer is, is one structure more valid than the other? We'd have to conclude, no. They look pretty much, or they are, identical. However, there's something interesting. When you look at the experimental structure of ozone, you don't find a short double bond and a long single bond. What you find is that all of the bond lengths are the same. And so that doesn't make any sense. It's inconsistent with both of the Lewis structures that we've got. And the reason is, is because there isn't a long bond and a short bond. There's only one type of bond, and what it is, is an average of our two correct equivalent Lewis structures. So what we really have in ozone is not one single bond and one double bond, is that we have a kind of a one and a half um, bond between the outer oxygen atoms on both sides. So we indicate this when we have a set of equivalent good Lewis structures by writing out all of the Lewis structures separated by double-headed arrows. And sometimes there's three or four of them. So the true stru structure is what we call a resonance hybrid of all of the correct equivalent Lewis structures. And it actually exists as an average of all of them. So sometimes this double-headed arrow kind of um, gives the impression that it's flipping between two things. It's not. It's an average of the two things. So it's kind of like if you have a mixed breed dog, so you mix a Great Dane with a Chihuahua, you kind of get a dog that's in between those two sizes. It's not flipping Great Dane, Chihuahua, Great Dane, Chihuahua, Great, Great Dane, Chihuahua. That kind of doesn't happen, right? So that's what's going on here. We end up with one average structure of the two equivalent resonance structures. So let's look at something that's a little more complicated. I said that sometimes you can have more than two resonance structures, maybe three or four. So we're going to illustrate that with the nitrate anion. So the nitrate anion, we get five electrons for the nitrogen atom because it's in group 5A. And then we get three times six electrons for the oxygen atoms. And then we get one electron for the negative charge. And that gives us 24 electrons overall. Now, as nitrogen is in group 5 and oxygen is in group 6, the nitrogen goes in the middle and the oxygens are on the outside. And we need to connect those with at least single bonds just to form any kind of structure at all. I like to put in the um, parentheses and the charge before I get too far along so I just don't forget. So I began with 24 electrons and I have to use six of them just to get the basic structure that leaves 18 to finish everything else off. So in step four, I start um, finishing the octet on my outer atoms. So I do that. I add um, six electrons to each of these oxygens to give them a full octet. So six times three is 18, and so that uses up all of my electrons. In step five, if I had any electrons left over here, I would have put them on the central atom. I don't, so that's not needed. And then now in step six, what I've got to do is check my central atom and see if it has an octet. Two, four, six, it doesn't. So I need to bring in one lone pair to get it up to an octet. Now you can see that it doesn't matter where I bring that lone pair in from, it's going to give me an equally good structure. In fact, there are three possibilities for doing this. So I end up with three resonance hybrids with the double bond kind of moving around this polyatomic ion, what I know is it's not that there are two long bonds and one short bond. All of the bonds are going to be of the same type. It's just kind of difficult to represent that with Lewis structures that it will be, other than saying it's going to be the average of all of these three. Okay, so... That concludes the section on resonance and there will be another two videos covering the next two sections.